I think I had a little false start. I don't know what happened, but hopefully this time works. Um, I'm so happy to have you join me tonight for Rainbow Reads. Um, we're here at William Jean's Memorial Library. And um, Rainbow Reads, if you haven't joined us before, is just um, about 30 minutes of um, reading some beautiful picture books um, that are all LGBTQ plus um, positive uh, stories. And there are so many of them um, that I could do this every month as long as I live and never run out. So um, I'm really enjoying sharing them with you. And um, one thing I've been thinking about that I want to mention before I start reading is that um, being a um, cis straight woman, I um, am still learning a lot, and if I ever say things that are um, incorrect or insensitive or hurtful um, and you notice, please let me know, um, whether it's in the comments um, during um, one of our live um, Rainbow Reads times together, or you can always send me an email um, or through Facebook Messenger to the library. Um, I want to always be striving to do better. Um, so um, let's get started with um, a new book that is so beautiful um, it's beyond words. There aren't actually a lot of words in this book. Um, if you remember, I don't remember how many months ago we read um, Julian is a Mermaid and the same author and illustrator has put out um, another book about Julian um, and it, like I said, it doesn't have a lot of text, um, but there's a lot of story um, in the illustrations. They're just magnificent, and it's the same, um, the illustrator is the same person as the author, Jessica Love, and you can't see the cover too well because it's shiny and the light um, creates a glare, but um, I'm going to turn off my space heater. My toes get really cold, but I don't want the noise um to interfere while we read julian at the wedding by jessica love julian at the wedding by jessica love published by candlewick This is Julian, and this is Marisol. Today, they are going to be in a wedding. Those are the brides, and that's their dog, Gloria. A wedding is a party for love. Look at the beautiful colors and the wonderful facial expressions on all of the people on this page. It feels like a party for love just looking at this page. Now, you can tell the story yourself looking at these pictures. But what it feels like to me, the story that I see in these pictures, is kids getting a little bit bored of all of the grown-up talk and activity. And if you look very carefully, you can see here a pair of feet, which tells me that Julian and Marisol, and now Gloria, the dog as well, are underneath the table. 
and then you can see on this page they're peeking out. Let's go, whispers Marisol. Where are they going to go? Looks like they're headed here, but what is it? It's a fairy house, whispers Julian. Have you ever seen a tree like that? That's like a fairy house that has, has uh, leaves that droop all the way down to the ground or almost to the ground. And it feels like a very special place inside. Excuse me one more time. I'm gonna turn off this thing that keeps beeping on my computer. I should have gotten rid of all the noises before I started. Sorry about that. You can see inside, Julian is very much enjoying the leaves of this magical, beautiful fairy house tree. And then he looks around and says, Marisol? Where's Marisol? Look where she is. Julian finds her, and when he sees her dress and her hair, he says, Oh. She looks down and says, Uh oh. He takes her back inside the fairy house. Julian has an idea. Now this is another page that doesn't have any words, but you can look at each picture and see what's happening, what the story is that's happening on this page. You see what Julian's idea is? He has taken part of his fancy outfit and given it to Marisol and made it even fancier by adding some of the beautiful parts of the tree. My goodness, look how beautiful they both feel now. Marisol looks like she has wings. And so they both pretend that they do have wings. What a great time they're having. Now look, the grown-ups peek inside the fairy house. And they find Julian and Marisol Marisol says, I got dirty. Yes, mija. That means my daughter or my child. But now you have wings. And she must know that Marisol isn't really into fancy dresses. See, she puts her baseball cap on her head. She understands. And they come back to the wedding party and the brides say, There you are! And once again on this page, look at the color and look at the beautiful expressions on everyone's faces. A party for love. And then... There was dancing. The brides are dancing. The party guests are dancing. Marisol and Julian 
are dancing. Did you notice at some point in the story, Julian got Marisol's flower crown? He likes wearing it even more than Marisol. Marisol likes her baseball cap. The brides are still dancing. The grown-ups are having cake. And of course you see Julian, Marisol, and doggy Gloria fast asleep after having such a wonderful time at the wedding, the party for love hope that you check this out. I think there might be a waiting list because it's new and because Julian is a mermaid was so popular that um, this one has gotten a lot of attention too. Um, I like them both so much. I was going to say I like this one even more, but I can't say that. it's They're equally lovely. Um, I'm not going to read this next book. I just want to show it to you as an example of something. Um, similar to um, the Julian books, um, I really am drawn to books that feature LGBTQ plus um, characters and families, but that aren't a book about, this is a story about a gay couple that has a child where it's just a natural part of the family or the people um, pictured in the story because um, that mirrors real life and um, I love um, books that don't have to make it a point to be teachy or preachy um, just feature what real families in our world um, look like which is all different um, so those of you that are watching probably not a whole lot of babies watching but even books for babies here's one called baby's first words and um, it's literally just a book of words with beautiful, fun illustrations. Um, but the baby in this book happens to have two dads who are featured throughout the book. And um, it is just a book about um, baby and family life and the things that you find in your home. Um, the more, if, so if you have a choice, between a baby's first words book that has um, a white heterosexual couple who has a baby, and you have a book called Baby's First Words that has um, characters of color um, who are um, not cis, not straight, um, choose this one. There are plenty of books that feature um, um, white heterosexual families and um, so we can encourage publishers and authors and illustrators to keep putting out um, great content that reflects um, the diversity of our, of our worlds um, by supporting them, by checking those books out from the library and by um, purchasing them. So whenever you have a choice, um, go ahead and pick one of those just to, um, to be supportive and to teach your children um, that all different kinds of people and families are equally important. So, um, now I'm going to move on to our next book, which um, I like. I like books that not only have people, but um, somehow are able to incorporate the beauty of um, all different kinds of people, even using animals or um, non-human characters like this. This one is called Neither. It is by Airly Anderson, and it is published by Little Brown and Company, and it has um, very fun illustrations and um, a very entertaining story to go along. Neither. And I like this first line. It says, once upon a time there were two kinds. And it doesn't say two kinds of people or two kinds of animals. It just says two kinds. This and that. 
these, and those. One or the other until look who hatched out of this egg. Bonk! They all say, What kind are you? I'm both. And they say, You can't be both. You must be neither. I'm neither. Neither tried to play a this game. But they said, you can't play with us. You're not rabbity enough. Neither tried to play a that game. And they said, you can't play with us. You're not birdie enough. Why don't you find somewhere else? You're not one of us. You're neither. 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 And look, neither is sadly flying away. Look at the view. See what neither sees. Neither is flying from this place where these and those live, where neither is flying looks very different, doesn't it? See the difference between this page and this page? What could this new place be? Whoa. Where did you come from? Honk! I'm from the land of this and that. But I'm neither, so I'm looking for somewhere else to fit in. This isn't somewhere else, but you will fit in here. Where is here? asks neither. It is the land of all. So many different kinds. I'm going to leave this page here for a minute for you to look at all the different kinds there are on these two pages. Which one is your favorite? This one's my favorite. Come play with us! But I'm, I'm different from everyone here. I'm neither red, nor orange, nor yellow, nor blue. Exactly. Neither thought that was a bad thing, but neither's new friends know it's a beautiful thing. Uh-oh, look who's here. <clears throat> Excuse us, we're from the land of this and that, but we don't fit in at home. We are looking for somewhere else. But you said I was neither. You said I should go somewhere else. Neither's confused. Well, this isn't somewhere else. This is the land of all. And everyone fits in here. go back to this page for a minute. So maybe you can see these characters that came from the land of this and that. Do you see anything about them that made them not fit in? Hmm. 
This is what everyone looked like in the land of this and that. Look at those very carefully. These two friends who came to the land of all don't look exactly like this and that. They found a place in the land of all. Once upon a time, there were many kinds, this and that, somewhat and what not, either, very, sort of, just, rather, a little, neither, and both. And all were welcome. Now, if I held these two pages up long enough for you to look at everything on these two pages, it would go way past your bedtime. So I can't do that. But the good news is you can check this book out from the library and you can look at all the neithers and boths and thises and thats and rathers and justs in the land of all where everyone is welcome. And hopefully someday everyone will make it to the land of all instead of staying stuck in the land of this and that where we try to make people be one thing or another, one way or another. Let me see. I have time to read you one more. This one is not a very long one. It's called 10,000 Dresses. This is just one of the 10,000 dresses. This is by Marcus Ewart, illustrated by Rex Ray, and it is published um, I lost that for a second. It's published by Seven Stories Press. 10,000 Dresses. Every night, Bailey dreamed about dresses. A long staircase led to a red valentine castle. On each stair was a brand new dress just waiting to be tried on. 10,000 dresses in all and each one was different. The first dress was made of crystals. That's the one from the cover. When Bailey slipped the dress on, the crystals clinked against each other like millions of tiny bells. And when sunlight hit the dress just right, rainbows jumped out. With all her heart, Bailey loved the dresses made, the dress made of crystals that flashed rainbows in the sun. When Bailey woke up, she went to find Mother. Mother was in the kitchen, cutting out coupons. Mom, I dreamt about a dress, said Bailey. Uh-huh, said her mother. A dress made of crystals that flashed rainbows in the sun. Uh-huh. And I was wondering if you would buy me a dress like that. Bailey, what are you talking about? You're a boy. Boys don't wear dresses. But I don't feel like a boy, Bailey said. Well, you are one, Bailey, and that's that. Now go away and don't mention dresses again. Bailey went to her room. Now she would never have a dress made of crystals that flashed rainbows in the sun.
That night, Bailey walked right past the crystal dress and went to the second stair. There was a dress made of lilies and roses. When she slipped it on, she saw that the sleeves were made of honeysuckles. Bailey picked a few of the blossoms to taste the little drops of honey. With all her heart, Bailey loved the dress made of lilies and roses with honeysuckle sleeves. Bailey woke up and went to find father. Dad, I dreamt about a dress, Bailey said. Uh-huh, said her father. A dress made of lilies and roses with honeysuckle sleeves. Uh-huh. And I was wondering if you could grow me a dress like that. Bailey, what are you talking about? You're a boy. Boys don't wear dresses. But I don't feel like a boy, she said. Well, you are one, Bailey, and that's that. Now go away and don't mention dresses again. Bailey went to her room. Now she would never have a dress made of lilies and roses with honeysuckle sleeves. That night, Bailey walked right past the crystal dress and the dress made of lilies and roses and went to the third stair. There was a dress made of windows. One window showed the Great Wall of China and another the pyramids. With all her heart, Bailey loved the dress made of windows, which showed the Great Wall of China and the pyramids. Bailey woke up and went to find her brother. I dreamt about a dress, she told him, a dress made of windows, which showed the Great Wall of China and the pyramids. You dream about dresses, Bailey? That's gross, you're a boy. But, Bailey said, but nothing, get out of here before I kick you. Oh no, poor Bailey. Bailey ran and ran. She ran all the way to the end of the block until she came to a house with a big blue porch. An older girl was sitting there with needles and thread and old sheets. What are you doing? Bailey asked. Making dresses, said the big girl, but it's really hard. Mine all come out looking the same. Maybe I can help, said Bailey. Bailey told Laurel, the big girl, about the dress made out of windows which showed the Great Wall of China and the pyramids. That's awesome, said Laurel. But how do we make a dress out of windows? We'll use old mirrors instead, said Bailey. Together the girls made two new dresses which were covered with mirrors of all shapes and sizes. These dresses don't show us the Great Wall of China or the pyramids, said Laurel. No, said Bailey but they do show us ourselves. You're the coolest girl I've ever met, Bailey, said Laurel. Hey, do you think you can dream up any more dresses? Bailey grinned. I think I can dream up 10,000. In fact, Bailey already had dreamed of 10,000 dresses. And Laurel knew how to make dresses, but didn't have all the ideas. What a great team they were together. And hopefully, Laurel or some others could help Bailey in interacting with her family, her brother and her mother and father, in ways that could help them understand that Bailey was a girl and to love Bailey just as she is. Um, and those are some of my favorite um, books that, that show children learning who they are becoming and who they always were and um, finding people like Bailey found Laurel um, to come alongside them and support them and see them 
And maybe you have someone in your life like that. Maybe you are someone like that to someone else. And I just want to encourage you to be who you are and to encourage other people, for you to encourage other people to be who they are and to love them. And to check out lots of good books that can also encourage you to live your most authentic life. Thank you for hanging out with me a little bit tonight and I will see you again for Rainbow Reads um, next month. Stay tuned to find out the exact date. Thank you and happy Thanksgiving. I am thankful for all of you, my friends. Good night.